Can you make too big a deal out of Shabbat? Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Torah Day 3 of Vayakel, and we continue in this Torah portion all the way into verse number 2. And verse number 2 says, Work is done for six days, but on the seventh day it shall be set apart to you, a Shabbat of rest to Yahweh. Anyone doing work on it is to be put to death. So to answer our question, if the death penalty is given to those who violate the Shabbat, I don't think you can make too much out of it. So Shabbat is more important than even building the Mishkan, the dwelling place of the Most High. You can work on the Mishkan, Yah's dwelling place, in your midst for six days, but on the seventh day, you are to rest. It takes precedent even over the dwelling place. Let us also understand then that any attempt to build a dwelling place for Yah begins with keeping Shabbat. Think about that. If I'm going to build or establish a dwelling place for the Most High anywhere in this earth, if I want my congregation to be blessed by the Shekinah of Yah, His presence, His divine presence, if I want it to be an outpouring place of His presence, it begins with Shabbat. Now, certainly there have been revivals at various locations. There have been outpourings of His presence with people focused on the first day of the week instead of the seventh day as a Shabbat. They would call it a Sabbath, the first day, the Lord's Day, various uh, various terms used there. And yet the Father still gave them revival, gave them outpouring. One might say, well, doesn't that not justify what they were doing? It could be rather argued and debated that Yah's outpouring was hoping to move them more correctly into Scripture. When, when we neglect the Shabbat, we lose the right to build His dwelling place because Shabbat takes precedent. If we're going to build His house, then it must start with the recognition of what day is the Shabbat. It has been all the way since Bereshit, the second chapter, Genesis chapter 2, until the present day, and always will be the seventh day. It will never change. It has never changed. Uh, there is no legality, no, no reason, not even the fact that Yeshua rose in the morning hours of Sunday morning. Uh, that does not change the Shabbat. The Shabbat is what differentiates Yah's covenant people from all of the people on the face of the earth. Now notice that I did not say you could not be born again unless you observed the Shabbat. There are those who worship on Sunday and do so passionately and with all of their being, not understanding, not having been properly taught about what day is Shabbat. Does Yah love them? Absolutely. Does he hear their prayers? Absolutely. Does he accept their worship? Absolutely. The same as he did yours and mine when we were in like situation years ago. The reality is, though, having learned of Shabbat, now I am called to be shomer of it, that is to guard it and protect it, and to be sure that it is a time of rest and refreshing with the Most High rather than another day of work. Only those in covenant with Yahweh are called to build a house for him. And that may be a hard statement. But he's called covenant people, Am Israel, to build him a house. And then Am Israel is commanded to keep the Shabbat. Building his house, having a dwelling place for his divine presence, and the keeping and observing of Shabbat go hand in hand. They are on the same ground. They are a partnership that cannot be dissolved. So when any man seeks to build any edifice for him, any building, any, any ministry, it should be based on the foundational truth as to what day the Shabbat is. 
Now, there have been a lot of arguments and debates for, you know, a thousands, thousands of years uh, about what day is what. Uh, all of us pretty much know that Constantine and the Edict of Constantine said, On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest and let all workshops be closed. In the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits because it often happens that another day is not so suitable for grain sowing or vine planting. Lest by neglecting the proper moment for such operations, the bounty of heaven should be lost. Following this, a little later on, at the uh, Catholic Church Council of Laodicea around 364 A.D., it says, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, on the Shabbat, but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day they shall especially honor, and as being Christians shall, if possible, do no work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing, they shall be shut out from Christ. So the religious institutions of man took it upon themselves to legislate a new day, the Lord's Day, the venerable day of the sun, which started out as a pagan honoring day, uh, became then Christianized, and um, it, it is followed until this day. Now, someone worshiping in church, sitting on a church pew on this coming Sunday, may not recognize any connection to that which is in the past. Yah has mercy on us and offers us an extreme amount of grace in doing so. And so he did for us when we were in like situation. So it's not up to you and I to start throwing bombs and stones at them, but rather observe our Shabbats, keep them set apart, keep ourselves set apart, and show the love and the joy of Messiah Yeshua in doing so rather than a hateful attitude toward those who disagree with us. Um, the significance of the seventh day. Be mindful that there were 2,000 years from Adam to Avraham another 2,000 years from Abraham to Messiah, and then another two years of the Messianic age. So that's 6,000 years. The beginning of the seventh year, the 7,000th year, the seventh day, is the day of the Moshiach. It is a time where Yeshua lives on and reigns upon the face of the earth. Uh, he reigns for a 1,000 years of peace. What a wonderful time. What a wonderful Shabbat with the Mashiach. Let us also understand that Shabbat is one of the seven covenants that are referred to as everlasting. There is the Shabbat in Bereshit 1, the rainbow in Bereshit 9, circumcision in Bereshit 17, the inheritance of the patriarchs is everlasting in Shemot or Exodus 32, the Levitical priesthood in Shemot or Exodus chapter 40 and Bamidbar or Numbers chapter 18. Mercies and enduring to the throne of David in 2 Samuel 2, 23. And the restoration of Israel is called everlasting in Yirmiyahu or Jeremiah 32. So if we can do away with Shabbat, then we can do away with the rainbow, with circumcision, with the inheritance of the patriarchs, with the Levitical priesthood with mercy shown to the throne of David and the restoration of Israel. I don't believe that Yah is willing to give away any of those things. Not one. Neither is he willing to compromise on Shabbat. Now, I want to share a verse with you. And it's found in Devarim in Deuteronomy chapter 5 in verse 14 and 15. But the seventh day is a Shabbat of of Yahweh your Elohim, you do not do any work, you nor your son nor your daughter, nor your male servant nor your female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gate, so that your male servant and your female servant rest as you do. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Mitzrayim, and that Yahweh your Elohim brought you out from there by a strong hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahweh your Elohim commanded you to perform the Shabbat. Shabbat is about remembering that we were once slaves. We had no choice and given no day of rest. 
But Yah has freed us. Because of your liberty and because of your freedom that Yah has given to you, we honor him by observing his day of rest. Remember this, Shabbat is not something you do. It's a moment that you enter into. 